Hey guys, good morning. Welcome to another episode of Motorcyclist MC Commute. You guys know the deal. Today we're going to be riding to the motorcyclist office in Southern California on Zero Motorcycles SRF. Today's episode of MC Commute is brought to you by Speed and Strength. On this morning's ride, I'm wearing the Speed and Strength Insurgent Jacket, Insurgent Glove, and Thumper Armor Denim Jean. If you want to know more about these products, please check the link in the description of this video. Now let's put the helmet on and go for a ride. All right, guys, here it is. Zero Motorcycles SRF, all electric street bike. This is a brand new motorcycle from Zero Motorcycles out of Northern California. Zero's been doing this whole electric motorcycle thing for a long time. They started in 2006. Fast forward to 2019, they have this. I love the styling of this bike. It looks aggressive, but in a tasteful way. Look at that motor. Look at the cool heat sinks on it, the way it's packaged, the way it hangs in that steel trellis frame. I love the attention to detail. I love that the Zero motorcycles now come with real motorcycle suspension, a Showa BPF fork, Showa shock. Look at that boomerang shaped swing arm and the finishing touches on everything, the battery, the motor. This is a very nicely built motorcycle. But enough talking about how good it looks. Let's ride this thing. All right, guys, here we go. All electric power from zero. We charged it overnight. It is at 1,000% battery capacity. We have about a 13, 14 mile ride to the motorcyclist office this morning. Right now we're in sport mode. Sport mode gives the maximum performance from this engine. So maximum performance. We also can choose from street, which mellows it out just a little bit. Eco, which mellows it out even more and limits top speed to 74 miles per hour. It also has maximum regenerative braking effect. So when you let off the throttle, the motorcycle deaccelerates very vigorously and that energy goes back into the battery. We also have a rain mode, riding mode, which reduces power and makes things even easier to ride. There's also a custom mode, which you can, you can pair by pairing the Zero app on your phone, you can actually tune all the settings of the motorcycle with that custom mode through your phone. So very neat technology from Zero. I like how integrated everything is. For now, we're gonna go on sport mode and really feel the rush of this SRF. And away we go, guys. This green circle here means the motorcycle is online. You can turn it online and offline with this button here, just like a conventional engine start stop switch. Right away sitting on this motorcycle, the ergonomics are pretty favorable. The seat has a very deep dish in terms of its position. You really sit down low in the motorcycle, which is nice. The handlebar has a pleasing upright bend a little bit the sweep is not as far back as I would expect a lot of these bikes these street bikes they have a lot of rearward sweep for whatever reason but this one has a little bit of of forward sweep not too much but just a little bit enough to give you that that aggressive commanding riding stance foot pegs are a little bit high I would say definitely has a little bit of a aggressive uh, seating position when it comes to the the room for your 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 knees and your feet seat itself seat itself is a little narrow um, but it's it's plush it's thick I think if you're a bigger human being you could potentially want a wider seat base it's also important to note that the zero motorcycle has adjustable seat height so there's seat height adjustments you can get a low seat or a high seat and that spread between the two is over an inch i think an inch and a half to be exact and away we go guys silently so there's a lot to talk about on this zero srf this is a totally new platform 
for the American motorcycle manufacturer and it's really focused on performance. This is a, at least in the electric segment, this is an ultra high performance motorcycle. It's powered via a 14.4 kilowatt battery. So 14.4 kilowatts, that's a measure of the, of the battery's ability to hold energy. So 14.4 kilowatts. Zero also offers an 18 kilowatt power system for you guys who really want a lot of power. And you can do that by, by fitting an additional power battery right here in this clever fuel tank storage system. There is a lock on the left side of the bike here, which when you turn the key, it opens this compartment and you can fit maybe for reference, like a six pack of beer. There's also two USB charging ports. So there's some degree of utility in this motorcycle. And if you want to have that extra battery capacity, that's where that cell would go. But we'll talk more about that in a minute. Specs on this thing. This motor puts out 140 foot pound of torque. 140. It's more than a Honda's Goldwing. It's more than a K1600 GTL six cylinder. It's more than any 1.8 liter American V twin. This thing puts a lot of torque down. And it's instantaneous torque. You twist that throttle and this thing is moving forward very quickly. And that's one of my favorite features of this motorcycle is the way the right twist grip feels. Zero motorcycles, they've been doing this for a long time now, right about 13, 14 years. And the refinement is and just how well metered the the throttle is i mean you can feel every little like you just twist it up like a barely at all and you feel that power come on conversely you let off the throttle just a hint and the motorcycle de-accelerates i really love how intimate the throttle connection is there's few motorcycles gas or electric made today that have as intimate a throttle feel. So kudos to Zero Motorcycles for really getting that right. Some of the other gas powered motorcycle manufacturers with, with ride by wider wire throttle setups could learn a lot by riding this motorcycle. So great throttle calibration, very precise feeling when you, when you add power and it makes for just a more entertaining riding experience. And man, this thing has some power, whoa. Finally a turn, guys. And for a 500 pound motorcycle, this thing doesn't handle bad at all. It definitely feels a little bit top heavy. Not so much top heavy, but it has this kind of flop when you turn to the right or left. It kind of flops down into the corner. I wouldn't say it's totally natural feeling, but I also wouldn't say it's totally unnatural feeling. It's something that you get used to pretty quick. To be fair, the calibration of the suspension has a little bit to do with that. The Zero SRF rides on a Showa BPF fork, a nice thick body Showa shock. And riding on this bumpy road right here, the suspension does a great job of soaking up the bumps and delivers a pretty supple ride. I'm actually impressed by how supple the ride quality is on this bike. The only caveat is the suspension is a little bit bouncy in terms of its rebound, but quick t twist of, a, of the adjustment screw up top and that solves that problem. Scoot up to the front of the line here, right where we belong. Away we go, guys. Feel this rush of acceleration. 
this motor makes so much torque that it literally you feel the g-forces you feel this motorcycle putting you back in the seat when you give it the beans this bike doesn't have a transmission it's direct drive one speed so if you can even believe it the only spinning component in the motor is the shaft that transfers power to the device that transfers power to the belt that puts it back to the rear tire. So this motor only has one spinning component and a belt final drive. When you buy the motorcycle new, the belt has a little bit of stretch in it. So after 600 miles or so, Zero recommends you adjust the tension on that belt. And after you do that, that's it. There's no more maintenance on this motorcycle aside from routine hydraulic brake fluid flushes and brake pad replacement. Zero also recommends you repack the steering head bearings every so often, I think at 24,000 miles. But that's it. <clears throat> if you can even believe it, the motor I'm sorry, not the motor, the battery in this motorcycle has a duty cycle of well over 150,000 road miles. It's quite amazing the durability of these, of these zero electric motorcycles. They, they're engineered to be, basically, to be running for the lifetime of the vehicle. There's no parts to replace. You don't reservice the battery. Like These things are made for the long haul. Zero actually stands by their power systems with a five-year warranty. And the motorcycle itself has a two-year warranty. So really impressive of the durability of these machines. Charging, charging, charging. So instead of fuel, or instead of gasoline, we're using AC power to charge this SRF. Now, a charging port right here, right here in front of my crotch is where you charge the motorcycle. It has a level two J1772 uh, type adapter, and that's the type of adapter you see at EV charging stations all across the United States. And at home, I don't have 30 amp power, so I have to charge it with a conventional 110 volt three prong charger. And if the battery is near empty, it takes eight hours to get that battery from near empty, empty to 95%. Motorcycle manufacturers and, and lithium ion battery manufacturers always use zero to 95% as the as the charging uh, time. And that's because that final 5% of charging from 95 to 100, that has a lot to do with, with battery topping, cell topping. There's a lot of, uh, of computer programming and things of that nature to make sure that the batteries get to that, that last 5% uh, to 100%. And that usually takes around 30 minutes to do that final cell topping. So eight hours to charge this thing with the standard 110 volt uh, three prong power adapter which everyone has at their home or office. Now if you want to take things to the next level and use the J1772 level two charger, this thing in standard configuration will charge in four hours. Four hours of charging time. Now if you opt for the Zero Premium, the SRF Premium, which has an MSRP of $21,500, and this is the bike we're riding, the Premium version, which also comes with heated grips, which are engaged right there. This thing will charge in two hours. Two hours. And it does that via an additional three kilowatt charger. So there's two three kilowatt chargers in this motorcycle as compared to the standard where there's only one three. So
so this thing will charge actually two hours with the level two adjuster I'm sorry adapter plug-in now these zero motorcycles are very modular we talked about the power bank that you can put here we talked about the premium version which comes with the six kilowatt charger which is two threes as opposed to the standard one with one three well zero also offers if you can believe it another rapid charging device which goes here in that power bank place so instead of the actual extra battery you would buy an extra charger which goes here and that bumps things up to i believe 12 watts 12 kilowatts of charging which allows the motorcycle to charge in one hour with the j1772 level 2 plug one hour of charging time but there's a caveat a lot of the level 2 charging systems across the United States aren't equipped to put out that kind of power. They can't put 12 kilowatts of power. According to Zero, much of the charging infrastructure right now can only put out around 7 kilowatts. 7 is what most charging stations in LA and San Diego and New York are capable of putting out. Obviously that number is going to increase very rapidly as society progresses. I think the charging adapter at our work is only right around three kilowatts. I don't really know the specification on it. So even this, even this premium model, our infrastructure at work doesn't allow it to charge as fast as this premium model can accept the AC power. A lot to talk about on the battery and charging uh, stuff. We just merely breezed over it but that's the gist of the charging apparatus and for riding around the city that's where this motorcycle really accelerates or excels quite literally it's zippy it handles very well feels very natural when you're steering it this doesn't feel this feels like a real motorcycle yeah you definitely feel it's 500 pound curb weight there's no line that this isn't a heavy motorcycle especially when you're pushing it around the garage this thing weighs a lot but the packaging is proper dimensionally it's not large it's not overly large it's not wide but it is pretty heavy but when you're rolling and moving, it doesn't feel quite as heavy as your as the curb weight curb weight would lead you to believe. Braking components, we talked about the Showa BPF fork. This thing has big radial four piston calipers, a big radial master cylinder by J. Juan, Spanish brake company, I believe. And the braking power on this motorcycle is great. Good power, lots of feel really allows you to stop in a pinch with this 500 pound bike this motorcycle also comes with Bosch sourced ABS and traction control and I'm pretty impressed with the ABS system works good feels very natural doesn't have a lot of pulse pulsation through the lever good job to the zero motorcycles team with the calibration of the brakes like it I like them a lot traction control system we haven't really ridden this bike in a manner that would deem it necessary to even have traction control but with a motorcycle that puts out 140 foot pound of torque immediately you're going to want some form of traction control especially when you're riding in inclement weather all right guys the wheelie test let's try it let's turn off this stuff real quick Turn off all the settings. I think we have to go in the menu to do this traction control setting, I believe. Preferences. Nope, not there. The switch gear on this motorcycle reminds me of a Piaggio Group's product with that device, this little toggle 
switch. You hit it once to do some stuff and you hit it a little longer to do other stuff. ABS on, that's how you change the ABS. Let's get out of this menu here. Data. Performance, performance, performance. Well guys, I'm not sure how to turn the traction control off. I doubt we'd be able to do a wheelie anyways. This motorcycle is so heavy, but let's try it. Oh wow, it does wheelie. Oh yeah, wheelies. Nice. Nice little motorcycle from zero and does little wheelies. Fantastic. All right, bracket in test. No back it in because of ABS. Nice calibration of the system. It's very fast responding. You feel it when it comes in. And here we are guys to the motorcyclist office here in SoCal. And this is a fun ride today on the Zero SRF. It delivers a very unique riding experience. There's no engine noise. All you hear is the whine of the drivetrain. But it's neat. It's different. It allows you to really connect with Mother Nature and the road conditions. Definitely it's a different experience. I'm not going to say it's better or worse than a gasoline, than an internal combustion engine motorcycle, but it definitely is unique and entertaining. Well, there it is guys. Zero's SRF Naked Street Bike. $21,500 for this motorcycle in its premium package with its 6 kilowatt charger and heated grips. I like this motorcycle a lot, especially for riding in a city or riding in an urban environment. It accelerates very quickly, it brakes well, it handles reasonably well, it looks cool. It has great fit and finish. I'm really impressed by the fit and finish of everything on this motorcycle. It looks like a quality bike that's commensurate with its $21,500 MSRP. It's important to know if you want to get into the Zero SRF and you're not so concerned with the rapid charging, you can purchase this motorcycle for $2,000 less with the standard 3 kilowatt charger. There is the charging port real quick. We'll show you guys the trunk too. Here's the trunk. The bigger optional six kilowatt charger goes here and the auxiliary battery goes here too and replaces the storage compartment if so desired. Let's just look at the battery quick, real quick here guys. So we traveled about 14 miles and we burned 17% of the battery's capacity. 17% in 14 miles, that was riding in sport mode. If you wanna get better fuel mileage, I'm sorry, better range, you can ride the motorcycle in in eco mode. Wow, there's another zero motorcycle. Now we got two zero motorcycles. So fuel mileage equivalency of this motorcycle, this thing literally will get upwards of 200 miles per gallon if you were measuring fuel economy in terms of an internal combustion engine. So highly fuel efficient machines, minimal running cost. This is a great motorcycle. If I lived in the city or an urban environment, I would absolutely totally buy this motorcycle. I do like it a lot. All right, guys, there you have it. A quick review of Zero's SRF. If you want to know more about this motorcycle, cruise on to MotorcyclistOnline.com. There may be a review there. Please cruise on to CycleWorld.com. There may be a review there. Make sure to subscribe to our channel. Leave us a comment, and maybe someone will get back to you, and we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Oh, guys, we forgot to do one thing. The beloved Instagram Q&A. I apologize. Let's get on this real quick. Instagram Q&A. All right, straight from the top, guys. And Nandez, do you need to be a vegan to own one? Ha, 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 very funny. Raw 7 asks, what's the realistic commuting range? It all depends, man. It depends on the power mode you're riding in. It depends how fast you're riding, how heavy you are with the throttle hand, 
uh, how much stop and go traffic you have if you're holding it at 100 miles per hour down the freeway it all depends you know we came from Irvine we came from my home to here 14 miles in sport mode giving it you know the beans a lot of the times we burn 17 percent capacity so do some quick math and you'll be able to figure it out from there how fast is it acceleration top speed it accelerates really well i wish we had a g-force meter which could measure the the amount of force that the bike is putting out when you're accelerating but we don't have that technology here unfortunately maybe i'll try to invest in a g-force meter one day and be able to provide that with you top speeds rated at 124 miles per hour we didn't get a chance to explore that because we're riding in an urban environment and there's police and laws and it wouldn't be safe to do so but i would love to try the top speed of this motorcycle vehicle weight 500 pounds in premium uh in premium configuration. David Sugars asks, is it top heavy? Yeah, it's a little top heavy, which is strange because look at the, the battery, everything and the CG of the motorcycle, everything is positioned really low and, and close to the ground, yet it still has this top heavy handling flop. But that could be something to do with more with suspension adjustment and, and dialing in the, the movement of the, of the suspension to get rid of that. All right, one more thing. A motorcycle without gears, how does it feel not being able to pull a clutch halfway through in a stop and go traffic or just not having gears at all? No clutch. And isn't that the whole point of having a motorcycle, the control over power through gear changing? That's a great question. Having ridden scooters a lot over the years and and those kind of vehicles not having a clutch is not a problem at all for me I love not having a clutch I love direct drive one speed no shifting it's really easy for me when I ride a motorcycle without a clutch I just use the rear brake and the rear brake kind of becomes my clutch in the ability to hold the bike when I'm giving it some gas so uh, if you adjust your the way you operate the motorcycle and add some rear brake technique you can actually have more control over the bike in lieu of not having a clutch but i love it i'm used to riding bikes without clutches i think they're fantastic i love the experience of a scooter and this delivers that same scooter like experience just with a lot more power and a lot more motorcycle feel with the conventional handlebar and the and the and the motorcycle chassis all right guys that's a wrap from today's mc commute thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time